Secretary of State Antony Blinken facing criticism this morning after his trip to China and for saying the U.S. does not support Taiwan independence. Well, joining us now, Congressman and Green Beret, Mike Waltz. Congressman, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Now, after Blinken said this, he also said that the U.S. opposes any unilateral changes to the status quo by either side and that the U.S. was committed to continuing its, quote, responsibilities under the Taiwan Relations Act. So what did you make of this? You know, what did you make of, of him saying, well, the U.S. does not support Taiwan's independence, yet it supports anyone trying to take away its independence? Well, it's it's longstanding policy, and and frankly, it's it's a bit confusing, uh, I, I think, to a lot of people. Uh, but it's essentially the one China policy where we support. Um, I think the easiest way to explain it is is one um, one government and two systems, and the separate system is the democracy that is Taiwan, uh, and we should absolutely say on the international stage in front of the Chinese Communist Party and in front of our allies. Uh, that we will stand firm uh, with uh, Taiwan and its right to govern itself. So, look, I think this was uh, badly done on Blinken's part. I think it's appeasing the uh, Chinese Communist Party to stand there on their soil and say it the way he said it. And I think it, it sends a very confusing message to our allies and to the region about whether the United States will stand strong with Taiwan. Yeah, and it also was important to point out too, NBC News, uh, Blinken said to NBC News, his trip did mark an important start to stabilizing U.S. ties with China and even said that the spy balloon chapter should be closed. So should we be okay with China spying on our military installations, Congressman? Should we be okay after U.S. officials said China yeah. had a spy station in Cuba? How should we be responding to that? Now we have reporting just coming out today from the Wall Street Journal of uh, negotiations between China and Cuba of a joint military base right on our uh, right on our doorstep. Uh, and by the way, Florida hosts several very sensitive military bases uh, that this puts China in a position to, to spy upon. So look, I think actually diplomacy done badly can be provocative. Uh, it can be it can uh, appear as weakness. Uh, and um, and and actually can invite aggression. So this is something that uh, we have to stand firm about. Yeah, and we don't even know what China would do. As you just mentioned, there are reports this morning of a joint military operation with Cuba. So are we even prepared for something like this? Is our military prepared for this? Well, look, we need a new Monroe Doctrine in terms of China in the Western Hemisphere. They right now own both sides of the Panama Canal in terms of the ports on that canal. Uh, they are buying up farmland across South America. They even have a mountain range uh, in Argentina that is tracking our satellites and tracking our launches. <clears throat> so they are flooding the Western Hemisphere uh, with money, uh, with diplomacy, and with military assets. Uh, and we have been asleep at the switch. Oops, they're even pouring billions into Jamaica, uh, into the port uh, right there into the Caribbean and in the Bahamas right off of uh, right off of Florida's coast. Uh, so we need to step up and we need to appreciate uh, and explain to the American people that the Chinese Communist Party is in a Cold War with the United States. They seek to replace us as a global power. And they are openly talking about defeating democracy and defeating the West. And now you've got North Korean officials vowing to attempt another launch of a spy satellite after that first attempt failed. Clearly, they see China didn't even face punitive economic measures for their spying attempts. How concerned are you about North Korea and their advancing nuclear arsenal? Well, we should all be concerned. This is now a global problem, not just a South Korea or an Asia uh, problem. Uh, they are have developed an ICBM there are some things they still need to do to ensure that it can re-enter the atmosphere and actually hit its target. But Kim Jong-un, uh, with a even a medium-range uh, nuclear weapon, uh, should, should terrify the world. Uh, and uh, this is something that I think we have to much more aggressively contain. Yeah, and, and and speaking of which, it's not just this advancing nuclear you know arsenal that North Korea has. We we also have to worry about these cyber attacks. We know a worldwide cyber attack hit several government agencies. What threat do Americans and the government face 
from a worldwide cyber attack. How do you feel that the administration is handling this? Well, remember that uh, Chairman Xi, the, the, the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, promised Obama uh, and Biden that they would not militarize the South China Sea, they did, and that they would knock off the aggressive uh, cyber attacks, they have not. Uh, they are using uh, private uh, quasi-criminal uh, cyber attackers as uh, a an extension of the state, and they seek to cripple us economically. They seek to cripple our, our infrastructure as part of their global dominance campaign. Uh, and you know what has me what has me so frustrated about this last attack is that they were able to penetrate U.S. government agencies, sensitive agencies like the Department of Energy, not some you know mom and pop technology shop that's that coming up with some new software. Uh, that's unacceptable, and from a congressional oversight standpoint, we'll be seeking to get to the bottom of it. All right, I look forward to finding out what, what you guys discover. And that Congressman Mike Waltz, great talking to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate uh, it. Thank you.